part that I like us to look at is the test of between subject effects. So this is the main place that we want to have an idea of what is going on here. You can see we have the class size, we have the teaching method, and then we have the interaction point or the interaction term. Now, um, you can see that for the class size, we do not have a statistically significant um, result here. And then you can see that the partial eta squared is relatively small. In fact, very, very small. 0 0.000239, okay? Under the teaching method, we have a statistically significant result here. And then you can see that we have um, a higher effect size in terms of uh, under the partial eta squared. Then the interaction term, the interaction of class size and teaching method um, is statistically significant and you can also see that uh, the partial eta squared is um, quite um, higher. Now one thing you need to look out for is that when you do not have a statistically significant result under the SIG, the F value will be relatively small. And the partial eta size, uh, eta square size, we really, really be little. Now, but when you have a statistically significant result, as the significant value decreases, like becomes small, 0 0.0000 whatever, the the partial eta square value will be higher. Okay, and then you can also see that the f um, results will also be higher. Now let me take you to my uh, the PowerPoint to explain the test of between factors. If you find that the p-value is less than 0.05, it typically indicates that there is a significant difference between at least one pair of groups formed by the combination of levels of the independent variables, in this case uh, we're refer referring to the teaching methods and class size. So when the p-value uh, for the test is less than 0.05. So it means that we will reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Secondly, we have the teaching methods. Under the teaching methods, uh, SIG value will have statistically significant result. We know that when the p value is less than 0.0, so we will reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, he said there is no significant difference in test score between students taught using traditional methods and those taught using uh, teaching methods. So this p-value here uh, indicates that, um, that, it, that we should reject this null hypothesis and, and then accept the, the alternate hypothesis which says that there is really uh, a significant difference between test scores between those taught using the traditional and those taught using the modern method. Now the interaction term, um, under the interaction effect, so you can see the SIG value is really, really, really 0 0.000003. That's quite um, um, lower. So assuring that the interaction, the combination of class size and teaching methods really con uh, contributes significantly to um, um, students' test score. All right, and then for those interested in the R square value and the adjusted R square value, so this analysis here explains 76.8% variance in the entire analysis conducted. That's the that, that's the point for uh, the R square value. So let me take you to the partial eta square test because if you look at this analysis, you will see the results of the partial eta square. Okay. Uh, so let me show you what that means. Uh, you can pause the video to copy the reference here and then read up this paper. It is a measure of effect size commonly reported in, um, in ANOVA analysis, including two-way ANOVA test. So it, it indicates the proportion of variance in the dependent variable, so in this case, test scores, attributable to each independent variable, so the factors and their interactions. So for the main effects, the eta square tells us the proportion of variance in the dependent variable that is explained by each of the main effects. So in this case, individually, the teaching method and the class size separately. Okay. So if you come to this point, you can see uh, under the partial eta square, you can see the class size here. 
that is absolutely so if we click on it uh, let's see whether we can get something so you can see the, the size the effect size is really really low 0 0.00239 or 0 0.00024 if you approximate that that's quite low right then you can see separately for the teaching method you can see that the effect size is 0 0.654 so let us look at how we can interpret that so for the small size 0 0.01 is really small and then the medium is 0 0.06 and then a very large effect size is 0 0.14 and above so in this case you can see that we have even far above 0 0.1 so this is pretty large effect size that we have that teaching methods really contribute to student uh, test score but again, we will go down to estimated marginal means to really know the one that made the actual contribution to this analysis. And same thing applicable to the interaction point. So the effect size uh, for the interaction uh, really gives us the idea. So you can see here we have 0 0.573, which is quite a huge uh, effect size. So the combination of class size and teaching method really uh, in improves students test score so that will lead us to the, the estimated marginal means so you can see that for the class size remember we, we, we did not find a statistically significant result here so because of that if you look at the mean of, of the of the class size you can see it's relatively same almost similar to each other and, and you can see that uh, 82.08 Three and uh, 82.1 C7 so this is really really uh, similar because we do not have any evidence of uh, effect of, of class size right under the teaching method you can see that the mean scores for for the modern teaching method is higher 85.833 and then that of the traditional method is 78.417 so this shows that teaching students using the modern method contributes higher to the test scores than traditional method. So here we can see that for the small class, the interaction of uh, the, the traditional method has 81.500, that is the mean, and that of the modern class, uh, modern teaching method for small class. Now, in a smaller class, the modern method of teaching contributes higher. You can see 82.67, showing that it's 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 better, even in a smaller class, when compared to the use of traditional teaching method. And same thing applicable to the uh, to the large class. So you can see that. In the traditional method, we have 75.333, but in the in the modern method, we have 89.00. So this is quite higher than the traditional uh, method. So contributing higher than the traditional method. So you can see for the large class, we are having 75.33, and you can see that here 75.33. You can see that in a large class. And in the small class for the traditional teaching method, you can see that we're having a little bit 81, close to 82 points. So you can see that that's significantly a, redu um, uh, you know, a, a reduction effect when you use traditional method in a large class. But in the, the use of modern teaching method in the class, you can see that in the smaller class, of course, that contributes to 82.60s uh, of the mean, and that is the point here and then increased to 89.00 you can see 89 almost close to 90 all right so another way to understand the interaction is let us head back to uh, the analysis then on that plot let us look at the bar chart continue and then run the analysis again so you can see here let us look at this point using the bar chart so you can see that in the large class the traditional teaching method lower than that of the modern method you can see the modern here and you can see the color on the bar chart okay 
you can see the that of the traditional method you can see that is lower in the large class under the small class size you can see the modern teaching method also has a, a significant increase so this is how you can understand the the, the results the effect the increase in uh, the interaction term and how each of the, the variables significantly predict your dependent variable.